Hey, Jason here with World Compassion, a couple of my friends, Chris Hart hey. and Justin Griman, uh, going in reverse. Justin Griman, if you see videos from World Compassion in the last couple of years, he is the man that is typically behind the camera. And today we've asked him to step on this side of the camera, which I'm sure you don't love. Love this. Love, love this. this. <laughs> but thanks for doing it. Chris Hart has been a board member uh, with World Compassion for a number of years on staff. Um, still helping out with some things on staff right now. Continues to be a board member, but also a personal friend uh, from our years at Oral Roberts University. Come on. And now we're raising kids together and got married, and all of a sudden we're 40 and not looking back. Don't know all what the, happened. All the stuff, yeah. <laughs> all the stuff. <laughs> Had to be able, we got to travel the world together the last couple of years doing ministry. A lot of fun. But uh, the three of us were in the Middle East last year and hosted our first Iran conference and so we want to talk about that with you today. Um, in May, we shared some incredible stories about revival that's taking place in Iran right now. The number of Bibles, I think we're over 130,000 Bibles, if I have my numbers right, delivered into Iran to date. Um, and we've just been given 40,000 Bibles. And that is a major campaign that we're in right now. Uh, Dollars-wise, it's a $240,000 campaign to get the money raised, to get those moved in and distributed. But I want to take a minute and, and let some of our partners uh, people who give to this, people who pray for us, people who are advocates for us, uh, inside a little bit and hear from you guys. Here's some other perspectives. Justin, your first time, not to the Middle East, you've been to Iraq with us, but your first time, along with ours, to meet some of these people that are leading the church inside of Iran, that are hand-delivering these Bibles. I just want to hear from both of you guys. Maybe what was a, a preconceived idea that you had going into the, the leadership conference and was that accurate or what change mm -hmm. took place when you got to meet and sit down and talk to some of these people uh, or what stood out to you in the conference? It's always, it's always amazing when you meet with the body of Christ anywhere in the world. We're so different, you know, taste, flavor, smells, music, style, all that. And yet when you, when you see them worshiping, even though their songs were not hill songs with Persian lyrics, they were absolutely Middle Eastern worship songs. And yet it was the presence of God. It was people that are just like people I go to church with at home, people that are like my family. And how quickly we all became yeah. like best buddies with them. In fact, Pastor, Pastor Joshua was with us. Um, he and I both had birthdays on that trip. Oh, and they yeah. brought out this massive cake with coconut and banana. And they're playing that... The bagpipe looking the bag thing. They did some wild dances too. <laughs> it was, they I think to, we have video footage of this I think we, I that we should put on top of this out. conversation right they, now. They love to celebrate. They, they love to throw their arms around you. And it's like I, I, you spend 10 minutes with them and you've been best friends for life. And they have a different background. They're facing different adversity, obviously, but it's the body of Christ. It was just amazing. You know, I, I, didn't, I didn't have too many preconceptions, I don't think. Um, I, I expect, you, you don't know if they, how they feel towards Americans because all you get is the media, all you get is the government line from them. So knowing that they care about Americans and they care about Israel and they care, you know, it's, it's cool to, to kind of say, oh, I should have known that, but no, it's good to hear yeah. it from, straight from them, you know. Like a human element, like, hey, these are people just like we are, just they're like educated. Us. I mean, there was a lawyer in the room. They were sharply dressed. They're smarter they than we are. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, yep. it, we're, we're not they, dealing with this village people or yeah. town people. No. These are people just like us that have families, mm -hmm. that have careers. Mm -hmm. um, they will, just live in a different religion. I will say they were very protective of their identities. And so we had to be very specific. Not, not every single person, but there were several that were very, very cautious. Please, please make sure my face is blurred. Please make sure you don't film me from the front. Please, please, please for my family protect our identities. And that's, that's different. You know, and I, I expected, oh, we'll, we'll put a blur on you. We'll change your voice if we need to. We'll film you only from the back, whatever we need to do. But they were very, very careful and very specific. Some the, of them the reality, yeah. of if that gets out and what happens to them mm -hmm. when they go back home, it's a big deal. Proud of who they are as Christians, but the, yeah. the safety threat was yeah. real. And yeah. we, we, we felt that. I appreciate you bringing that up, just especially with people watching right now, because you're the one that has to deal with that. I mean, mm -hmm. you're hired. Your job on these trips is to capture the imagery yeah. of what people who are watching this give to, because we want to come back. We want to show you what your money is going towards. We want to show you the progress. You're just as much a part of this team. But then in some of the environments we work in, sometimes it's difficult it's to do that. We can't show everybody what we're doing because it could hurt the local people. And our policy here is it's people above process all the time. And so we're always going to err on the side of protecting the indigenous church. Mm -hmm. 
And so you, did you even have people come up to you privately afterwards, right? One, one individual in, in particular was quite heated. He didn't know ahead of time that, he, that there was a possibility that we might be filming. From, and I was filming at that point from the back of the room, the back of people's heads only. I was very careful not to film faces or anything identifying. And yet he was like, hey. Yeah. And I had to, I'm like, hey, you can, you can trust me. I'm a good guy. I'm going to take care of you. I'm going to protect you. your footage. Yeah. But he, we just met, you know. Yeah. And, and so it's like once we talked and, and uh, he understood that we were going to be very, very careful and nothing would be online without blur or alteration, that it was going to be very, very safe, then they, they, they were okay. It's a, it's a real reality that we face. Um, the stories that stood out to you. We had the opportunity to sit down. Justin, again, you're videoing these stories. Chris, you and I are in the room. Pastor Adam and Josh were in the room. You know, five of us American guys from all of us from Oklahoma on this trip. Uh, How about sitting, that? <laughs> the heartland of America yeah. is what Joel Vassan would say. We're sitting in this room, this hotel room, and literally just listening to these people talk about what it's like to be the church inside of Iran. And there's one lady that, that we interviewed, um, and I, you know who I'm talking about. Yeah. I want you to share that story. Talk about like how, her boldness and just what, what she's doing every day. She's probably, just for context, she's probably in her 50s, I would guess. D55, fair. And, and just, just full of life and energy and zeal. And uh, again, to your point, you know, you, you hear what the governments seem to be disagreeing or arguing about or whatever that might be. And that's not the case person to person. And so she was very um, amicable and, and, and friendly. And she had a very specific role that she kind of felt like she was playing. And she, she just told us, she goes, what I do every day is I ride in a taxi. And it was kind of a little bit different than a taxi, almost like our Uber. Yeah. Call him Snap over there. Snap. Look, great name. And, and she would get in there and she took it upon herself to lead Snap drivers to Jesus. And, and like every day, and I thought one thing that stood out to me is she goes, think about it. They're young drivers. So I've got a place maybe to speak to them as, as a little bit of an older lady to them. But at the same time, it's also a safe environment because it's just me and them. It's not like it's a crowd of people. And if these three people get offended, they say something. She, at one point, she said, it's just them and I. And if they disagree with what I'm saying, I can get out. <laughs> and I would just get another taxi, right? <laughs> I'll just but, move on. But she just said, like, and, and it was sort of like, okay, put this in perspective for us. She said, I'm probably leaving, leading three or four taxi drivers to the Lord every day. It wasn't like total it was like every day my mission, I wake up, I have to go places anyways, and I'm genuinely communicating with them about the love of God. They're hungry and they're open to it. And so then at one point she goes, I don't know, I'm probably at about 40% of the taxi drivers in her city. Like just, just recognizing this is the, the, the production that she's created. This is the efficient, I mean, just who she is and what she's actually doing. And, and my takeaway from all of it, they don't look at it like someone else is coming. They're not looking at it like, well, hopefully somebody else will come and they'll go to a great church or they'll see something online. It's literally, if I don't lead this young person to Jesus, nobody else will. So it's very, there's a lot of ownership and responsibility in their relationship and then stewarding the message of the gospel. Yeah, that was something that really hit me is when they, they shared that with us. They said, you know, we have every believer in Iran carries a personal burden to advance the gospel because if we don't, it dies. And I mean, that statement hit me. I was like, that is, that is not, I don't think, how the majority of the church in America works. I don't think we carry, we don't have like this almost healthy, I know his yoke is as easy as burden is light, but there's not like this burden. There's not this fire uh, to do that. And I th that to me was almost convicting uh, hearing from them. One other thing that I remembered after actually going back through the interview footage was the lady that's reaching out to the, all these taxi drivers or snap drivers, she was, she was saying that, yeah, I think you asked her, do you give a Bible out to every driver? And she's like, no, I have to be very, very strategic. I only give the Bibles to the, the people that I think is going to have the most impact because she has limited access to Bibles. Even with all the Bibles we're sending over, she still has to be careful and only give them to the, the, the very best prospects. And I just think, man, how much, how much more could she accomplish if she could give a Bible to everybody and say, because you know, there's, there's other stories we heard of people that were given a Bible and they tossed it aside for, for weeks and then they found it later when they were at the bottom and they started reading it and they felt peace and they yeah. learned about Jesus all on their own, just in their own home with just a Bible, nobody telling them about them, just yeah. reading that Bible. But if, every, if she's able to give every driver a Bible, yeah. she might be at 70 or 80%. Come on. You know what I mean? You never know. Yeah. You never know.
That is, that's a great perspective. The, the other side of it is I also appreciate her almost stewarding them in a yeah. sense, you know, where you're not just handing out where someone's not going to respect it. Uh, at the end of the day, I would rather err on the side of putting a Bible into everybody's hands. Um, but that stewardship principle is something that, that is important to us. And it's fun to even hear, I appreciate you bringing that to our memory, to think about the people at the other end of all of this. In May, we shared the story of two doctors yep. who are husband and wife that climb into a cab at the end of the day, um, right at the outbreak of corona in Iran. And Iran was hit very, very hard. It was in the news early on when the outbreak occurred. And they're in the back seat and they're complaining. Um, I think they're even cussing a little bit. They're frustrated. They're talking about how they're under-resourced. They're not equipped for this. There's the fear. There's the unknown. And they get in this conversation with one another in the back seat. It's, if there's a God, how could a God allow this? And the driver, unbeknownst to them, is a Christian. Maybe because of Our Lady who yeah. has led them to the Lord. Uh, but he's a Christian, and so he lets them vent. And we talk about this story. Long story short, he ends up sharing the gospel message with them, spends three hours with them, leads them to the Lord, and to this day is continuing to disciple them. Very cool update for everybody watching this. Those two doctors who in... We got that story, I think, in April, March or April. We shared it with you in May. Today, they have now led 26 people <laughs> awesome. Come on. to the Lord. Yeah. So here's what we found out. They are directors, so they are people of influence in their hospital... Coronavirus breaks out. They ask the woman to come over and take another leadership role in another hospital because things are crazy. So she comes over and she walks in this hospital and she tells us that it was like walking into a state of depression. The staff felt overwhelmed. They were defeated and there was depression. And one of the nurses, while she was on her shift, tried to commit suicide. They think she tried to overdose. Um, so she took it upon herself to care for her. She was making her rounds. She'd come into her room and she'd pray for her. When the woman woke up, she came to, she woke up, she told the woman, the, the head nurse, a dream that she had. And she said, I was in a dark place, but every time um, that I would be in this dark place, I could hear the words, Jesus Christ, off into the distance. And eventually the place became light and a hand grabbed my hand and took me over to a lake and we grabbed fish from this lake and we brought it over to a river and put the fish in the river. And when she woke up, she told the woman this story, and the nurse said, that voice you were hearing in your coma was me. I would come into your room, and I would pray over you, and Jesus is your Savior, and He's wow. your healer, and He's why you're here. And she begins to tell the, uh, share the gospel message with this woman, leads her to the Lord. Okay, now get this. <laughs> they give her a week off, okay? She just went through a traumatic emotional experience trying to commit suicide. They give her a week off. She goes home. She walks into her apartment. And she begins to tell the story to her husband. Her husband, who's a drug addict, they have kind of an estranged marriage, begins to open up to his wife. And she, he said, while you were in the hospital, I was tired of my life. You were, I thought you were going to die. I was going to take my life. And I was going to shoot air into my veins with a needle. And every time I started thinking about doing it, I would hear the words, Jesus Christ. And I went and asked people, who is this man? Can somebody tell me about him? And they couldn't. And so she explains to her husband right there in the living room after she walks in from the hospital who Jesus Christ is, leads her husband Let's to go. the Lord. It's amazing the yeah. domino effect that's taking place just in the last couple of weeks. This is something that hasn't taken place over months or years in Iran. This is from the very beginning of the coronavirus, just in the last several weeks, last couple of months. From one Bible given to a woman who led a taxi driver to the Lord, that taxi driver led this doctor couple to the Lord, this doctor couple led this nurse to the Lord who led her husband to the Lord, and that couple now in their hospital, because they have influence, every single day is holding prayer gatherings, and they're praying for their patients and handing out Bibles. The multiplication effect is amazing, and that's the impact that Partners of World Compassion, that you who are watching this can make just by one $6 gift. I think we take it for granted. That Bible, it's just Bibles. We're so used to it, but that Bible literally changes people's life. But in Iran, that physical Bible is more than just a Bible. It's more than just a gift. It's a ministry moment. It's a ministry opportunity. So every time somebody gives, you're empowering somebody, a Christian in Iran with a ministry moment with somebody who doesn't know Jesus yet. You're opening that door for them to share the gospel message, to build a relationship with them, and then through that relationship, invite them to be a part of their house church and begin the discipleship process. Jesus told us to go and make disciples of all nations. 
relations. In Iran, this is how this happens. It's the transformational process that takes place first in someone's heart and mind that then translates to a nation transformed. And that's what we're about. And this model that's taking place in Iran from person to person is the most effective model. I love big ministry. I love big events. I love crusades. I'm for those too. But just sometimes those aren't able to happen in some of the countries that we work in. And so this is how it goes. And that's what you're a part of. We want to invite you to be a part of it with this ongoing. We have incredible momentum right now. We continue to get more than 40 to 50% increased people requesting for a Bible every single month in Iran. That's somewhere between 900 and 1,200 people every month asking for a Bible or asking questions about Jesus. And so we want to be able to meet that demand. We were just given 40,000 Bibles. We're in the middle of raising money for that campaign. It's a $240,000 campaign. We want to ask you to give. Pray about what you can give and give generously. Maybe you've never been a monthly giver to World Compassion. You can say, hey, I can give $36 a month. I can give six Bibles a a month, or I can give four Bibles a month, $24 a month. And over the course of the year, how many Bibles could you put? How many ministry moments could you empower a Christian in Iran with? And together we could impact one of the most closed and restricted nations in the world. We couldn't do this work without you. It is literally a picture of the body of Christ working together to lift the arms of the church in Iran. We love you guys. We got more conversations coming up your way. We hope to see you soon.